I think we are on. I hope everybody can hear us this time from the start. Uh, if there's anybody even here. But we are back. We have our heroes who had last time adventured down to the Aeliad ruins and managed to get a couple of Welkin stones, found uh, an old tablet of a long dead person who had sought refuge here. And then a Falmer, a bunch of Falmer came out of a tunnel and chased you guys out. You kind of packed up your stuff, took a couple of moments to get your bearings, uh, and then set out again eastward towards the Imperial City. Uh, you know that it is still at least a couple of days, though the exact distance may be not immediately obvious. Um, and you do travel for quite some time. Give me, uh, let's call it, um, did I make it an athletics roll the first time? No, 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 no. Physical stress roll. So roll number and add it, add your current physical stress. I think I, so if you don't have a, any physical stress, you just add... Thing. Yeah, I actually didn't get any physical stress last time. You didn't get any hurt at all last time? No. I let those creatures fight each other, and then I threw a big rock. That's all I did. Yeah, and so you, then you'd add in six. Six, okay. It was six, just six, a right? big rock. I just threw a big rock. To me, it's just a big rock. It was more than just a big rock. <laughs> I think it was just a big rock. You shut you? up, you. Well, I definitely uh, started out in character. I got average. Let's see. Uh, ones, you guys will... Uh, anybody who rolled a one, you still have that situational aspect of chilled. Mm. Uh, or you gain it if you... Yeah, below a two. Um, but you venture on... Uh, Who's got the uh, the stones? And have we resolved? Do we need to do any talking about, uh, you know, in character, about what happened last time? I, it felt like maybe there could be some unresolved tension. I don't know what would make you think that, looking at Razor. I didn't, I didn't know the big rock was important to you. Rocks are just rocks. She has a point. Rocks are just rocks. Except apparently not these ones, so I, I mean, apologize? Most, most rocks don't glow. That is true. Most rocks don't glow. Only the, the ones that do are more definitely more beautiful than the ones that don't. I, I can agree mean, with that. Are you or just a bit, what is the word? Uh, Razor, shadow? are you okay? <clears throat> wow what why wow. is he why I, I i turn and i uh look over at uh neo i think or little little i don't know what you're which saying. whichever way you want to say it you know, whatever um so i look over at you and i look over at him because he's like giving me that stare and is he okay he's just a little upset i think that he can't try to use the magic of that stone to rekindle his own magic, though he claims to not be able to do that anyway from our conversation last time. Ah. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Alright, so uh, next time don't throw a big shiny rock. Got it. I mean, to be fair to you, your throwing arc was very on point if the dude who had tried to catch it hadn't failed so terribly, I think the rock would still be quite shiny. I will put that in his court, not in yours. I look confused as to whether that was me or not. <laughs> <laughs> not you, young one. The fallen, uh, the falmer. The blind pale elves. Wait, those are elves? Yes, 
And do you recall Razor's teaching at the campfire last night? Oh, I... I don't really pay attention to Razor when he talks. Ah. <laughs> I mean, he was at it for like an hour. Uh, a few hours. You know, elves are pretty good at hearing. The oh. short version Hey, now is, he talks. Yes, they are fallen elves, in a sense. Made a deal with some people they should not have under dire circumstance and are thus blind and live usually underground in caves. Hey, hey, Razor. Mm -hmm. He'll be fine. Let's go, we're burning daylight and I'm running out of booze. So you venture on. Uh, and you actually travel for pretty much all the rest of the day. Um, Bodhi, if you want, you can make uh, another alchemy check to go gather uh, stuff t for people to eat and uh, set up for camp. Uh, not all that eventful of a night. We're not going to spend time on fake perception rolls for the moment. But, uh, oh gee. <laughs> but uh, not able to find much in the way of food. Uh, might have to try and make, you know, use up some of your uh, maybe flour that you had found from before to try and make some flatbread. Just cook up some. That works, right? You can do that. That's a thing, I yeah, think. You can cook food and, make well, some dough. Skyrim, you can make food. Fried in a can't. pot. Fried in a pot. Do we have a pot? I, I believe we it was briefly mentioned last game that uh, they one of the guards likely would have had a pot. So you can have a pot. Somebody can have one. Okay, sweet. Cool, cool, cool. We also have a bunch of skeever meat. Uh, That's so right. So I can just make a skeever. relatively right. tasteless skeever stew, or we can roast them over the fire. Uh, even I am not probably going to eat skeever flesh raw. I mean, you did a little bit. You probably know. Let's see. Sorry, keep talking. But uh, it's not its not a good thing to eat improperly prepared. It has a tendency to <laughs> damage your health. And you know how to poisonous. do that? Yeah, I can. Okay, good. Cool. Just like in me. Meat. Proper cooking. Maybe we should boil it then. Good, a good stew. Are you well versed in alchemy? I know a bit, yes. Oh, like I know a bit of conjuration. Uh huh. Uh, and technically, uh, Aaron, I'm gonna go. If you do, you have a skill in conjuration. Yes. You would have learned a conjuration spell, but you know that over the last since the Oblivion Crisis the spell that you know has not worked like there's magic that gathers right. and but nothing happens roger so energy gets released and that's it um but uh yeah lack of food uh so you guys eat some skeever meat it's tough mm. coarse kind of stringy not not good meat uh, but uh, it goes down and guys it keeps you alive and the you know cooking it over a fire being near a fire does seem to help uh, stave off the worst of the cold uh, as it is a bit uh, too, you know too cold for this time of year uh, in the morning you continue on and uh, it's late morning before noon that you uh, again a, another set of clouds roll in and it kind of rains on and off you guys can see uh, it's cold enough that you can see your breath puffing out and you kind of come all over this little it's mostly forested and especially i should point out that it's basically a rainforest at this point in uh in the in the valley uh and you kind of come around the bend you can see through trees up ahead uh, maybe a little bit of smoke coming up uh the signs of of activity 
and you can see buildings. Uh, maybe the, even the first sign that you're getting close is that over to the side uh, a bit is like a logger's cabin. Um, and you can see a small village up ahead of you. Maybe down below you guys are up a little bit on the side of a hill and you can see maybe even to the side uh, a road or something perhaps that leads small road. And this is half a day's travel? Yeah, it's about a half a day from from where you camped. So you did a full day travel from the Aeliad ruin, camped, half a day, village. You maybe yeah. even see the biggest building is the church, and that's maybe hard to see through the trees, but it's tucked tucked away back there. I'm going to pause at a decent distance and gesture towards the village to probably the two very human-looking individuals, being uh, Vale and Wynn. Hey, thanks. Uh, I've been kind of, um, you know, curled up and chilled most of this most of the trip, so I'm excited to see some. And I, as you point that direction, I pretty much just like nod and just start going. So you pretty walk. Big. Oh, all right. I guess we're going that way. What was that, Christina? Nothing. We're just going. <laughs> uh. You head relatively confidently ahead, your satchel with the uh, scroll over your shoulder. Uh, and you kind of make your way. So it looks like as you get closer that the buildings on the kind of outer edge of this village, there's maybe a couple, of, a couple dozen in total, three dozen, four dozen, I don't know, less than 50. Uh, but the outer buildings are clearly ab abandoned and it's not until you get past the first couple that you see um, looks like there's a, a hastily made like walled like the, the, the little road that you're walking down is walled off with like carts and just pieces of wood and some posts uh, looks like it's been I mean it's it's walled off pretty well but yeah just with random things hmm. blocking it off it looks like there may be you don't see a way through right here you might have to walk around a little bit maybe try to find a way in but you don't see any people yet this is concerning doesn't this mean bandits or something or something or something definitely could be something uh i'm gonna fall behind the group and try and be sneaky stealth or whatever the role is. Stealth? I should get the... Uh, the Can Elder I Scrolls roll perception skills. to see if there's like anything like recent as far as like non-human footprints or something different than what is normal? I guess. Yeah. Uh, roll uh, perception. My limited amount of knowing what is normal. I guess. Yeah, you can. Bam, I got terrible. Sounds about right for my character. <laughs> you look around. Um, you can tell that there are a lot of... Uh, there's, 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 yeah, footprints. It's muddy. Um, so you can point out footprints, but you can't tell. It's hard to tell the difference between a boot print and a footprint and maybe, maybe horses or something. Who knows? Yep, you look around, it's very, very obvious that there's tracks everywhere. And you turn back to other people and you're like, there are tracks here. <laughs> yep. Cool. Yes. I'm sure if we circle around, we'll find some sort of entrance or... Well, no, maybe we shouldn't make a bunch of noise. That might draw unwanted attention. Can I search some of the abandoned buildings near us for a bow? Uh, yeah, you can you pop your head into some of the um, uh, one of the buildings and realize like it's basically been ransacked. There's there's Dang. really uh, 
yeah probably not a lot there's a hearth like sitting in the middle of the room to keep it uh, warm and but basically everything else has been stripped off there's sh um, empty shelves maybe a table or something but is there a decrepit looking blanket uh yes uh, I'll bring it out to Vale and lay it over his shoulders and then go be sneaky again. Oh, you kind of look decrepit now. I thank you. Um, well, I guess it is I'll... nice that you can find some small warmth even in a desolate place like this. Uh, you say that and you thought maybe right away there weren't any doors right here, but as you, you, you say that out loud, uh, one of the, like a panel on the side of this makeshift wall pops open and a crossbow sticks out right at uh, Vale's chest. And, and it, oh, halt, halt. Whoa, easy there, friend. We are not bandits. Who are you? I Stay there. Look at the stolen blanket that's around my shoulders and pause. <laughs> I am Wynn. Hello. I'm proud of everybody to oh. everybody to say okay. their names. Now I'm gonna need you to um to to step aside for a moment and put down any uh any weapons that you might you might have on your person, okay? I drop my sword. Okay. Uh, and then you hear like a woman's voice, like behind him, and like popping up above the uh, the edge of the wall is uh, not does not look like a guard or anything. Just looks like some woman dressed in normal like villager clothes, and she looks at you guys, and she she shouts behind her back and says that uh, we have company. And then uh, she. Yeah, yeah. She says, uh, open the side door to one of the other people, and there's some a little bit of commotion. A moment passes, and like they shove a open uh, part of the wall itself, the uh, thinner part. You can hear them moving things around, and a little bit uh, parts there. And out steps the guy with the crossbow, kind of pointing at you guys, and he says, okay, uh, uh, you can come in, but you have to swear that you have uh, no ill intents for the... And then he stops and he sees uh, I don't know, one of your hands. He sees the back of one of your hands. He sees the scar that marks you guys, the brand, that marks you guys as criminals. And oh, he, he just stops. What do you guys, Did you guys do anything in that moment? Who's our party face? Who's the bard here? Want to get on uh, that? Lover boy. <laughs> I uh, I was uh, raising my hands to say, of course, uh, uh, we bring no ill will. We are but only tr uh, wary, hungry travelers looking for uh, perhaps a place to uh, warm ourselves and uh, a bite to eat. Um, he is now, he has pointed the crossbow back at you. He had let it kind of slide off there for a moment and he starts taking a step back the woman also notices and she starts yelling like well, oh hey. bunch of criminals ex-cons coming into the town they're gonna take oh. all of our stuff oh, oh. my god uh come on shouting, you know the empire you can get one of these for anything <laughs> imperial <laughs> imperial prisoners uh, they have nothing they're gonna take our stuff uh Look, just because we were prisoners doesn't mean we are anymore. <laughs> I I would have worded that differently. <laughs> um, it we are, despite uh, uh, perhaps our colored past, we are on a quest for the gods, and your, and we are not interested in anything more than helping you here as much as we can. I mean, um, wait, we're helping the. I well, I mean, oh, yeah, if sure. okay, he yeah. meant ill intent, the guy with a crossbow, I could have taken him out with one swing. It does appear that you are, uh, your village has come in some uh, bit of discomfort or bad news, I look around. Uh, is there any way we might be able to help? Um, 
they uh you, you are being very reasonable with them right now and very quite calm and i applaud you for that uh they uh don't really listen they're a little bit hysterical and one of them's very nervous uh, one of them's shouting uh and they kind of uh back up uh and there's a couple more of these uh guards that show up you can see in the back and they're watching intently like oh my god what the heck but there's really only like three of them total uh and then a guy uh wearing priestly a priest robe steps up and he's like whoa and he like gets in between you and the guy pointing crossbow at you and like maybe is more willing to listen he says hey hey they'll be my responsibility i'll i'll handle them don't just put the crossbow around we don't need to be shooting at strangers we don't want to cause like remember what happened last time okay and he turns around what what happened last time we... obviously there was an altercation yes that Jester is Jester behind me a way to put it i i see that um you are in need, and it is my duty to help provide for those in need. It is far time we forget that you know, forget some people's sins, and and move on. Isn't that right? Can't we all? And he like nod, and all the the three like kind of fearful looking guards kind of all nod in agreement. Um. What was it you had said there earlier, uh, young one? We are but lonely travelers come to help. We are on a mission from the gods, though, and uh, any good that we can do along the way would be um, much to our liking. Give proud you side eye. Uh, yes. Um, well, if there's, I'm, I'm sure we could use a helping hand and, you know, many different things um so please c c come in what what happened here um uh, well he, he uh you guys you guys kind of start coming what what i don't i don't know what this is my sword i'm gonna like i'm just gonna like uh, look yeah. at them and just pick up my sword like i'm not sure they told me to drop it and i did nothing happened so i'm just gonna pick it up again there's maybe as you go to grab it like some like twitchy like <gasps> as you grab it up because it's like a pretty cool looking sword. sword yeah it's a big sword who looks to be i mean other than the priest it is the lady who is in charge it seems that way yeah so um if i start casting a spell like a restoration or illusion spell it, how obvious is that it's pretty obvious when you're casting a spell mm-hmm there's light involved and sound. And glowy hands, usually. But restoration is pretty obviously restoration magic, usually. Yes. Um, and illusion magic is obviously restoration magic as well? <laughs> yeah. Every time. If you're good enough. <laughs> Uh, well, at the moment, it's not needed, so continue. You get led in, and um, there aren't a lot of people here, but it's basically this kind of ring of buildings that's, and it's got the, um, like, the village center, and they've kind of cut off all the avenues into it. And, you know, the buildings here are cl closer together, so it's easier to build little walls in between. So they use the buildings for... Uh, extending their wall uh, makeshiftly. And you can see a few people kind of moving around. There's a, like a little stables that's pretty much empty over to the, on one side. Um, the church again, tucked in the back, surrounded by trees. It's got uh, a fence, pro a, a, like a, no, it'd be like a stone, like a small stone wall around it. That's probably the most fortified place, but it looks kind of sad and empty over there and people actually seem to be giving it a wide berth and he explains after you asked uh, what happened here that um 
uh, the near most, you know, nearby Oblivion gate that opened uh, was a, a, almost a, a whole day's ride from here. Uh, so the they weren't immediately affected by it, but after you know they all went crazy and started killing each other, one of them showed up here and went into the church. And the elder priest, my, my, I should do it from the first person, right? My uh, master uh, cast a spell on the church that is now got it trapped. It's a, it's a ice demon, an ice atronach, if you're familiar with the term. I'm familiar. It's stuck inside. So we can't use that. Uh, it wasn't long after that that uh, bandits started showing up. We knew that trade between other villages, the blacksmiths that we knew, some were dead, some were gone. And then, I don't know, about six months ago, uh, Imperial soldiers came through and took volunteers to uh, help secure the realm and... Well, we haven't seen them since. Volunteers or volunteers? I know what you mean, but in this case, it was... Everybody went willingly that I know of. Oh, good. Unfortunate, though, is... I'm sure your town needed them. Well, we do have some protection, but... They went out. You'll have to meet the captain when they come back from their patrol. If. When? I mean, it sounds like they've been here a long time, so I'm sure these pro patrols are routine. They usually go out in the morning and come back in the late afternoon before it gets dark. Um... Here, I have a place that you could put your stuff. It would help put everyone's minds at ease, I think, if you stowed your weapons. I'll keep them here in my building. And it's like off, just off to the side of where the church is. He's kind of got a little shack, basically. Spacious enough. Uh, and he's got spare bedrolls that he starts kind of unpacking. And he says, you can keep them in here. Um, and he's got like a private room as well it's like i won't i don't this door doesn't lock so <laughs> you could take everything from me if you really and again, why don't you guys he, he just like move glances on. at your where would they go well elsewhere you don't need to <laughs> <laughs> got it anyways um <laughs> i did a joke guys uh -huh. you go to elsewhere. Yen, that's right yeah you nailed it i did <laughs> Okay, anyways, that's all I have for jokes. Um, serious, though, uh, my character, uh, she she looks confused. Uh, well, because there's nothing left here, and you could go to nearby towns or start anew or just keep on going until you find some place that suits you and your people. But if you're staying here, it seems like you guys are just dying off. I've seen countless civilizations coming across the desert of, of people who no longer have names to themselves hunkering down when they should have just gone on. Well, you remember all of that, but you don't remember where you're from? Well, I know I'm from the desert. I just don't know specifics, because your languages and your destinations and your civilizations are odd. Okay. Traveling is very dangerous. Or traveling is also a means to a, br a brighter future. Sometimes you have to take that risk. I, but dying. there are those who can't nothing. really make the journey and there are those that find themselves thrust into positions of authority and they so tend saying. to like that a lot of people here are just simple farmers uh, who will 
more or less stake their lives on this place. They were born here, they'll live here, and they want to die here. And we have sent travelers like to home. the Imperial City and to get supplies, but... How long ago was that? Uh, um, the last time we did it was, uh, I think it was a little over a month ago. And each time they come back, it's the the news is that the city is more crowded and crowded and that they're r slowly running out of their own supplies. The cost of bread is more than what we could scrounge up here. And it's not I safe don't know to go what the hell they're walls. doing. Sitting on their asses when they need to be out here getting rid of the problem so people can go start farming again. Well, can we help? We can help doing a couple of things. Sure. Uh, yeah, well, if you have, go. Uh, Cheers to see. I mean, first and foremost, obviously, we could take your concerns to the Imperial City as that's where we're headed. Uh, that wouldn't actually cost you anything. You've been more than hospitable for that. I'd, I'd do that for free. Uh, but as far as your other two concerns of bandits and the Frost Atronach, Bandits might be a little bit more difficult, but the Frost Atronach, uh, that might be something we could handle with. What? Wait, really? Is it? It's a cold demon? <laughs> it's, a, it's a Daedra. It's a, yes, it's from Oblivion. It's a entity that is constructed out of ice. Like one of those things we encountered before? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a, a different species, but yes. There? Oh, yeah. Then why don't you just burn it down? Because it's a church and they don't want to do that? Well, then I guess that's their problem. That seems like an easy solution. There might be more than one solution, though. Yeah, What's like the church smashing made out a of? priceless rock. I like you more and more, Wynn. <laughs> Unfortunately, people can be rather fervent about their gods. It's well, just and... In most cases. I think Vale might have a little insight into this, but burning down a church of a god might... Uh, it, it might be bad for... Isn't it already bastardized, though, because it has a demon in it? Isn't that against most of your gods' codes of conduct or whatever? No. I believe it's the other way around, that the the power of the god is what is helping save this village from the demon mm -hmm. by using the holy ground of the church to trap it. Yeah. That was also, the priest. Yeah. Well, dealing with Daedra is not exactly specifically against their religious doctrine. Mm -hmm. They frown on it, surely, but it's not against the law or anything. Oh, Casey, which god is this temple to? It's to, so it's not, uh, uh, just a general, it's to all nine divines. Um, and is, That's uh, right, nine. Uh, not Azura. Um, Akatosh is the main. <laughs> Azura. <laughs> the primary, gets the primary spot, as is pretty normal. As head of the Pantheon. Yeah. Um. Are you set on this course, Razor? Oh, my flame magic should be able to damage it well enough. I mean, they're tough because they're made of ice, but they're not invincible. And they're not I all mean, that difficult to control. I'm, I'm no expert. To... Oh. oh, go ahead. I'm no expert, but it seems that fire would work well against ice. Yeah, exactly. You're as cold as ice. To we could perhaps our church. interrupt the GM. <laughs> <laughs> no reason, Casey, no reason. Um, uh, no, we could perhaps build a bonfire then. And preparation. So we are burning the church down. No. No, I don't think that's... <laughs> They're just using fire, fire, God. <laughs> Uh, we'll open the we'll open the doors. We'll lure it out front, and then fight it out here. 
Uh, or those of us can have torches or the like. Right. Yeah. How, how well would this this here sword work against it? About as well as any other weapon. Steel okay. is harder than ice. Um, are you discussing this out loud? As uh, uh, yes. well, he hasn't even given. I didn't even. His name <laughs> is uh, Urun. Urun. U U R U N. Urun. Priest. Brother. 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 If we are going to help you, I will need proper equipment. Do you have a bow and arrows? Um. <laughs> We do, but they took them on the patrol. Well, I think we should wait for the patrol to get back. They might be uh, useful in assisting us dealing with the uh, Atronach. I must counsel uh, sadly against it, as my understanding of the spell or the magic is that if someone goes in, it can eventually come out, and if it comes out and gets free or defeats you, well, we haven't been a, we haven't taken that risk yet. We've been well, so I look so around at every- No like, offense the ruins to you, of this place. Uh, priest, <laughs> With, like, but uh, I uh, am no stranger to uh, the mystical arts, and I think I know a little bit more about this than you do. But if you don't want to open the door, that is your right. Well, maybe it's something to be deliberated. Fine. It we'll would wait certainly until this be a big. He looks back towards where you can see a few people. Uh, kind of doing their thing. Uh, everybody that you can see pretty much is doing some sort of chore or working. Uh, even th there's really like the one guard who's actually going to do the different spots and checking. Uh, the other two stop being guard. Like they put down their weapons and they go and they start helping to fix something or to put something together or whatever. Um, huh. And you know, he says th that would give ev everyone a, a. It would take. It would give them hope, for sure. But mm -hmm. it's also too risky. There are things you could you could stay for a while and help us with. Just surviving that would be valuable as well. Well, then when we leave, what is it going to help you with? Because then the people you've been depending on to survive leave, and then you're back at square one doesn't seem like that works well for anybody. In fact, the rules of the wilderness speak it so that you must adapt to survive and you clearly are not capable of doing that. Well, I know there's my friend, there's there's nowhere else for us to go. The, the we would are... love to stay and help as much as we could, but we are bound by our own quest. But we would love to to leave this place better than we uh, it was than we arrived. And if we can bring hope as the gods would bring hope, let us free that and let us do it. For we, it is not by random chance that we have come by your village. It is because we are meant to be here to bring that bit of hope that has been gone since oblivion. Hmm. But if you don't want to run through our plans, then, well, sorry to say, but we'll have to We'll have to mosey on out of here by tomorrow. I understand. Um, so, we'll wait until your people come back uh, from their patrol, and then we'll discuss this further. Very well. Um, in the meantime, would you mind helping out around? We've, I was working on patching the roof of this building over here, and... Of Did course you say not. you need some smithing done? We have been without a smith for some time. We've been trying to make do. I only have a little bit of skill, but I pick some up, being a squire. There are still tools, I think. I'll I'll take you over, and maybe we can have um, Gerdbull 
uh, who's who's also taken <laughs> tried to. That's her normal name, <laughs> okay? For an orc, maybe. It is an orc. Okay, well there you go. Oh, I'm sure, he's <laughs> a lovely person. He is. He's nice. He's tried. He's not. A, you know, we stereotyped him to be the smith in the village, and he yeah, doesn't really know what he's doing. Being the smith. <laughs> I mean, if he's the strongest dude, he's the best bet. Yeah, maybe that was one of the guys who grabbed weapons when he showed up. That's Gerd Bull. Uh, I'm just going to hop over their little wall around one of the... Just on the border, just hop over it and go out into the woods. Um, You hop up. Yeah, I like this. Uh, And like kind of like s- scamper your way uh, and you drop down and right in front of you as you drop down is a, a young Khajiit boy, like 10 years old, uh, got a pack and he's like been climbing and he, you can see he's got like mud and stuff on his hands and he was going somewhere and he was being sneaky. And he looks up, he's got, bi- he's gray, mostly gray, light gray with, um, you can see maybe a couple of dark, almost black, dark gray splotches, and then he's got white. It turns to white on his face and down his neck. Uh, he's frozen in fear. I'm just going to pat him on the head and keep going into the woods. Be careful. <laughs> okay. he. Uh, you turn your back on him, and next time you look, he's gone. The rest of you, uh, you get t- Aaron, you get taken over. You start doing some chores, some really simple like Smith repairs. Go ahead and give me a Smith roll. Uh, and then the remain the rest, the three of you, uh, help uh, Urun with his little project. And there's like things that kind of come up throughout the next couple hours. Um, that maybe you help out. So it's like this kind of oh montage of of chores. Mm-hmm. Uh, what'd you get? Oh yeah, Aaron, you're helpful. Yeah. You're actually fixing stuff. That's very nice. You, yeah. you do some very basic smithing functions. You get that through. It's all they what they really needed, and you perform it just good. Nice. Um, the the building that there's a some point throughout the day where um. I'm going to have, it's, uh, let's have uh, Re- uh, Vale and Win. You guys are, you know, grabbing some wood to help bring, uh, and you've, you've noticed there's this cart in one of the, like, uh, underneath a canopy part of your uh, trying to repair that part, extend it, make it more waterproof. Uh and this cart is like full it's got uh some some long how do i want to describe it there's paintings in it a boatload of paintings uh and you bump into a uh older khajiit woman who's coming out and helping with the uh the project here and um she kind of looks at the two of you, thanks you for helping, um, and really stares at uh, you, Vale, for a long time, deeply. I'm uh, sort of used to that. The 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 tarp that's covering the 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 paintings, and I yeah. pull one out, and I was like, "Would this be good to set on fire?" She, <laughs> she's like, well, it hasn't come to that yet. Um, but if it must, it must. If my paintings, and she kind of puts a hand on them. Um, by the way, you're looking at this. I don't know. It's pretty good. Like you're looking. You're like, wow, this is actually. It's like a, you know, it's a painting of pe- people. You know, people doing stuff like 
just like you see people doing work and chores inside of some city. It looks like maybe, yeah. Is Unsure. this what this place used to be? This? No, that's uh, the town of Coral, actually. Ah. Well, what these are are art and beauty. They offer a value beyond just warmth and nourishment of the body, but also of the soul. I I'll like work like browse the paintings. They used to provide a bunch of gold as well, but these days nobody has money for paintings. I look over a veil. Your sense of beauty is very vapid, and I put it back and I walk off. Whoa. Uh, beauty is pretty vapid. Yeah. No, okay. Yeah. Anyways, I... <laughs> <laughs> got a point. Remind, remembering, remind, <clears throat> remembering the last time I called wind beautiful. Hmm. Never mind. <laughs> okay, but yeah, I'm gonna browse through. Like, they're pretty good, right? Is that what you're telling? Yeah. Um. Do you have scholar? Have yes. You want to roll me a scholar? Roll me a scholar. Of course you have. Yeah. So, I am very mediocre at art. It's, yeah, you look at these and you can tell they're good. Um, but the greater masterpieces and why they're masterpieces might elude you. I'm just going to put it all in. Art is good. Beauty is great. And uh, uh, make some good comments about the art to the old lady. Nice. Uh, and then make oh. sure... <laughs> I'm just going to add that. And make sure that the cart ends up someplace not near the temple. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it doesn't burn. Because we're clearly burning the, the church down. <laughs> well, we're burning something. I'm still unclear as to the the, the logistics, but you know, yeah. we need fire. Me too. You know what? Me too. I'm curious to find out what's going to happen. Also, uh, I do want to get the lady's name. Uh, Kikira. K i k i r a. Kikira. She is uh, dark, black and brown, for the most part. Hmm. I will tell her that uh, if I get to the Imperial City, I will and uh, see a need for your art, or I will send people your way. Thank you. Uh, what is your name? I feel that we have. I've seen you somewhere before. Uh, I am Vale. Um, I do not know where you would have seen me, uh, but I hear that many have met my mother. Who is your mother? I, I probably should have said seen instead of met. But anyways, um, uh, I you know, lean forward in low tones and say... Uh, my mother is the goddess Mara, bringer of love and beauty. She kind of leans back away from you and like takes you in a little bit and is like, yes. Uh, Just going to advertise that, are we? Well, I suppose that they must have some children. The gods must be, they must be walking around. I guess I said... It's nice to meet you. Vale. Yes. Yes. Um, she, she, uh, she really, uh, she uh, notices, I'm just stuttering. She notices your thingy, the scar, and um, asks, what was that for? For people like yourselves who are in need of, of food and hunger, I uh, found food for them that the Empire did not agree with. I see. It seems 
well, everybody's needs help these days. Um, thank you for, for, as you guys know, to keep doing your chores, whatever. Uh, Bodhi, what are you doing out there? You run, you run out into the woods. I'm just casually walking. I don't expect to be attacked. And if I do, I'm pretty confident in my ability to oh. sneak away. Are you sneaking? I'm being cautious, but this is the woods. And I am gathering wood for the bonfire that was proposed. Roll perception. I'm a little distracted thinking about things. Um, yeah, you walk, you come over a little tiny rise or around like a, maybe a big boulder or something and some trees and coming through the trees on a little trail up ahead of you are, uh, it's, it's now probably uh, afternoon-ish. You've been out here for a little while. Uh, maybe? Do, do you, you just get in wood and returning or? chilling in the woods uh not particularly comfortable in the village uh yeah uh, about eight men on horses are slowly walking towards uh your your direction are they very obviously guardsmen i feel like that would be um, pretty easy to they spot. They aren't wearing like any insignias or anything like that, but and they their uh, arms and armor are kind of hodgepodge. All right, I'll uh, I'll head back stealthily, uh, but with my yeah, bundle of a, sticks. Give me a sneak roll. See if they spot you, because they will spot you if you don't hide. Well, let's hope I roll well. I did not. Oh. If I take too long trying to figure out if they're guardsmen or bandits. One sec. So, yes, they do... The, the front one does probably spot you as he shouts as you turn away and start to slip back into the trees back around the boulder over the little rise back towards the village he shouts and you hear a horse trotting faster as you kind of sidle in or try to get away do you do anything different or you just keep going? i'll not try to be sneaky if they've already found me then they are much faster than I am. Woods are no. Dang horses! <laughs> so I'll just stand there with my bundle of sticks, waiting to see how this plays out. Um, they ride up to you. And, um, turn and, uh, one pulls out a sword, the other one has a kind of like a spear or so something that kind of points your direction. Uh, and you see another guy coming up who's got a bow. Got a bow. Great. Uh, there it is. And no, just uh, build them all and take it. They look at you. They look at like your what you're wearing, and they look at your the fact that you don't really have much equipment. Do you have the Welkin? You have the maybe left the big Welkin stone behind, or? Yeah, I'm gonna leave those with a razor. Okay. Because I can't use them. So. I have. So you're just a standing dagger. there with a bundle of. Yep. Sticks. Bundle of sticks. The definitely not particularly good clothing and a singular dagger, as well as a small pouch that appears to have things in it. Probably a little bit of mushroom sticking out. <laughs> um, they look at you and are like, uh, one looks back, he's like, Captain, we, uh, we've got another one. Another one? A uh, wanderer? These, uh, these woods are full of people who are up to no good. It's not, not safe. You should... What are you doing with that wood? Is your camp nearby? There's a village over there. I was bringing wood back for 
a fire. Hmm. Uh, and uh, a, one of the guys has gotten off his horse and has come walking up to you and uh, he sticks out his chest like he's really big and important. Um, and he's kind of overweight and got a scraggly, lots of scraggly facial hair um, that's kind of long, but like not styled at all. And uh, he steps forward and he's like, well, put that stuff down for now. We'll... We'll take you in. Uh, you shouldn't be I'm, out here. I'm willing to go with you, but it did take me quite a number of hours to gather this wood. I would appreciate it if we could bring it back with us. I don't they, have to be the one to hold it. Who's expecting? If that makes you more comfortable. Are they expecting you back soon? I believe so. There's a priest. I don't remember his name. You, he, you, his Something hand... Something about runes. His hand, like, nonchalantly drops to his sword, and he, you see him, like, thinking. Can, and, can I and, just hand the bundle of sticks to somebody else, and then hold my hands out, assuming that this is how this is gonna go? Uh, you go to... You, as you go to do that, one of the, the guard with the or the guy with the bow says it's it's not going to be worth the headache. And uh, the guy takes his hand off as you're trying to be like, I'm not threatened. He's like, all right, well, <laughs> uh, walk in front of us quickly. I have very short legs, but I will try. All right. And they uh, go back to the village with you along this trail. Yep. They find a way in. Uh, and yeah, so everybody becomes aware of the fact that pretty soon that the patrol has returned. Hi guys, I found the patrol. This Good one job. appears to be in charge. He is kind of rude. But I also got sticks for our fire. Oh, well, uh, potential fire. Let's see how these negotiations go. I will leave that to you. They, uh ride in they get off their horses they some of them embrace family members uh after they've come back they start unpacking they have stuff that they start pulling out uh one of them even you see you hear the jingling of coins is like pulls it off of and it's like random things uh maybe they have a uh, pouches of food or material that they pull off of these horses and go and start putting away. Um, and then the the leader guy kind of walks over to you and like looks at, all, at the at the five of you and sizes each of you up and then looks at Razor. Yeah, he's that's his judgment. <laughs> Are you the leader of this bunch? Something like that. What? You're all, um, escapees. No, what? we were released. Where's your, the mark that you were released then, huh? It's on our hands. You only got the first one. Yeah, we never got the terribleness oh. started before they could brand you as being released. We were on our way to be released when all our guards were attacked. Mm -hmm. Yes, our guards were uh, attacked by uh, Daedra, so before well, we could be completely released, uh, we had to hobble through the woods. Technically, the ultimate release the Daedra that attacked the guards, but... Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring out my Daedroth teeth, and I don't think that he's going to know what they are, but I will show them to him regardless. You got these teeth. Um, they look like sharp teeth. Uh, much, uh, obviously not like a wolf or really some other animal that you would have pulled off. It, they're pretty unique. So, I mean, he doesn't know Daedroth probably from anything else, but they look kind of otherworldly, nasty-looking teeth. 
um, he kind of nods. Um, it's like, uh, I, we should have food first. Let's eat and then let's, uh, talk. I'll, uh, we'll be, uh, he looks back at his group and he's like, well, we'll interview each one of you one at a time just to make sure that, uh, you got your story straight. And then if you do, no problems, right? Does that sound all right to you? No arguments here. Okay, then. And so they kind of split up. They uh, go back to uh, unpacking, getting ready. You can. Just, there's kind of a main, bigger building where you can start to, they start to cook up some food. Uh and brother Urun comes back and is like, sorry, he's kind of a jerk. People in his position often are. Hold on, I need to make a decision. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't you roll a dice. Don't you dare roll those dice, Bodhi. You know you exactly those, what's happening. You put those dice down. Okay. I heard you. I heard you roll. I don't say anything. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, but yeah, we we eat up and then we do the interviews slash meeting. Yeah, he's they. Uh, they actually make you wait for a while. They say, you know, oh, well, we've got stuff to discuss. We have plans for tomorrow's patrol that we have to come up with. So. They kind of put it off for a little while, and the and it's not until well, uh, it's getting dark that they that uh, someone comes and um, requests oh. uh, the younger one. We'll start with the. They they don't say child, but this we'll start with the. You. Wait, sir. they're separating us. Of course yeah. they are. That would be the idea. Yeah. Um, like, what's our what's our story, guys? What's we have a chance to prepare like for his for truth. our temple plan. While oh, we were yeah. waiting, yeah, sure. So I assume we've probably like prepared a bonfire somewhere outside the door of the temple or something like that, and mm -hmm. and then we'll yeah, I'll happily go talk to them. I know what my story is. I don't know about you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not eating any food offered to me by any of the patrolmen. If it comes from the priest or one of the other villagers, I take it, but not, not enthusiastically. Those. If it comes from anybody from the patrol, I do not take it. Okay. So they lead you kind of back over to like, a, I don't know, what it amounts to a guard post uh, and take you into like a side room and uh like yeah there's no tea they don't give you a drink um and there's a there's like two armed men like one of them's leaning up against the wall foot up against you know uh the back of the wall and he uh you know crosses his arm and has like a kind of contemptuous face look on his face the other one uh uh sits with a sword across kind of in the back of the room sits with a sword across unsheathed sitting on his lap uh and then the the captain follows you in uh and they ask you he says please sit and gestures at the chair did you bring anything with you by the way uh i probably not I mean, I guess, uh, you know, I generally have that satchel with the scroll in it. Is that true? Do you guys let me keep that? Um, uh, I mean, yeah, I don't <laughs> see why not. I mean, the if the scroll is supposed to be with you, it'll just stay with you. So that's how okay. that works. <laughs> and I'll, I'll just assume I brought my stuff. I'm not going to. Vale was not, like, concerned about this meeting. So there wasn't a lot of pre-planning. Cool. So you brought it along with you? 
Um, so, uh, what's your name? Oh, I am Vale. Vale. What is yours? I'm Gareth. Captain Gareth. This is my village. I make sure that the people here are safe and uh, that threats are dealt with. I provide safety, food, protection for people here, and in turn, in return, I get the authority to make decisions about what happens inside these walls. And I don't like five criminals, escapees, showing up and eating my food. And then I'm told that you're planning on leaving tomorrow. Well, I'm yes, we are on the guards. For the food. We, we have but already done many tasks here, and our goal is to free your temple in payment for any of the hospitality. For that, it's a thing we can do. You want to get rid of the uh, ice demon? Yeah. No, no. Wow, kid, come on. Really? You're going to go that crazy with us? You know, you could have you could have any number of options out there for you. But you're really going to go with that one. Wow. I'm not sure I understand, sir. Well, I know you're lying. Uh, well, how about this? What's in the sh satchel? Um, and you hear footsteps uh, behind you, the guy who is sitting down at the back of the room. It is part of our divine mission. It is, uh, I believe they mentioned it might be something uh, like an Elder Scroll. Uh, I'm glad I can't see Rob's face right now. Let's see. You could, you can't see it, but it's it's disappointment. Pull it out. But these. I do. I uh, reach in. I pull out the scroll. Obviously, I don't open it, but you know, here it is. Get your mind out of the gutter, Aaron. Well, I mean, in different circumstances, I might have taken it differently. But in this case, I assume he was referring to the Elder Scroll. Yes. Uh, you pull out the kind of new, it's got nice designs on the two ends of it. Um, and it, you just looking at it, it looks like it was has a high level of craftsmanship. And, you know, there is something about it. It does, like, draw your eye in. Doggy! And... Uh, they look at it for... There's, like, this brief moment, and, like... You see hunger in the captain's eyes, and he kind of like looks at the two guy. He's he motions over for one and like is like says, uh, "Go make sure that the others." Oh, he says something under his voice. Yeah, the, you you hear that? Go make sure the others. And then he looks over at you and says, "Even quieter." You can make a perception roll to hear. Uh, uh, three, I probably do. Yeah, so you he, go make sure that the others, his friends, aren't going to cause a problem. And uh, we'll get the other room ready for this one. Do you, I mean, I don't want to be presumptuous here, but do you really think that going up against a group of people who can take on an ice demon, uh, one that's ascended from a god, and who carrying an Elder Scroll is really a wise decision for your village? Uh, excuse me. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. See, uh, we're just uh, making sure that uh, if what you say is true, that we've got something really important here. We better, uh, we better get this to the... Uh, to the to the mages guild as soon as possible right and then you can uh and he's that getting, is what we're doing yes he's getting closer and he's like uh 
So why don't we just go ahead and take that off your hands? You know, we could go for you. You could stay safe here. And he I'm prepping his spell. He reaches out for the. <laughs> uh, what spell are you doing? Yeah, he's he's uh, reaching. Calm. Ah, very. What a useful spell in this situation. Mm-hmm. Um, I but think it perhaps is going we should all calm down a little bit. All right. Uh, make your spell roll. That's illusion, right? Yes, it is illusion. I got a three. That. Um, I that's not enough. Let me know. I have fate points. They get a resist. And here, let me make sure I've got the spell. Is that... I don't remember off the top of my head. Calm. So you got three shifts. That's going to go ahead. He's going to take a minor. He fills up his mental stress. He's going to take a minor mental consequence. Uh, it's going to be, I don't know. Yeah, minor. He's, he's going to take a minor consequence on that. And then uh, you get the sedate boost on him. Yep. And so he kind of... Uh, as you, and he he very, he kind of calms. He's like, look, but it's very obvious. You just cast a spell on him. Yeah, uh, the other person in the room left though, right? So it's just us. Uh, so there was three in the room. He had just been talking to one, uh, and I, the other guy was just leaving. So there's the other one that was still in the back of the room. Uh, you hit him with the spell. And then you feel arms trying to grab around you. Uh, so I assume that's the third person trying to grab me, or is that that's the third different person. set of arms? Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, roll athletics, uh, or it's not athletics. Acrobatics, right? Acrobatics, yeah. Hmm. I might get him, need... bud. Acrobatics brawl, one-handed perception, perception. I got a zero. Okay, mm-hmm. so he strong arms grab around you and kind of pull you back and press. The other guy's like, "Hey, man, don't." The captain, uh, Gareth, is don't just chill. Uh, yeah, don't you think it's probably best that uh, you go get some of the other people to help out there sir i say to whoever's holding me i think that the captain has this under control um there's a bit of commotion the guy who had just left comes back in is like shit uh keep him pinned we can't kill him here well i mean or anywhere really right (laughs) um he says that uh, and nobody notices the pair of eyes watching through the window uh, scamper away. Uh, the rest of you, mm-hmm. hanging out, doing you your did. thing. Uh, the priest is trying to assure you that everything's going to be fine. You, you guys, uh, you're going to be fine. Like clearly, you're no threat. You were willingly came in here. You, you know, he's got your I swords over the thing. It's, obviously, you're not. It's not going to oh, be yeah. a problem. Just going to turn full, f- just facing the priest, completely deadpan. I think you know that to be untrue. Mm-hmm. You've met this guard captain, and I'm sure you can guess that when he found me alone in the woods, only the bowman, assuming that the bowman is not one of the people in the room, nodding in his direction, prevented him from killing me on the spot. You tell me that we are safe, but I don't believe you. No, I will... Oh. Listen, they, they might be doing... This place is rotting. Mm. And Unsavory. the people who are rotting it are the guards themselves. Well, just one. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Well, those well are... sadly, you've uh, your guard captain has wasted a gratuitous amount of time with his 
power play of making us sit here and wait. Uh, time which we could have spent using to help you, but uh, seeing as how late it is in the day, I have, I'm have i afraid that we'll probably just have to leave in the morning. I understand with that, but I mean, I swear... He- he may be unsavory in a lot of ways, but you know he's not. He's it's not a he's not a murderer or anything. And just as he says that, uh, this, did I misspeak? This child, um, uh, Khajiit, the one from earlier, comes mm-hmm. around the corner and says, "The captain's trying to kill your friends." Well, I'll level a glare at the right. priest and then go with the little Khajiit boy. Uh, yeah, I, I we still have our weapons, right? And like, where <laughs> he uh, he leads you off. I I had this going differently in my head, but it's fine. We can do that. Uh, he <laughs> he leads you. Uh, he runs over to the uh, where he came from. There's a window, right? Uh, there is. It's like got soot over it, but like along the bottom on the edges, it's kind of been rubbed off so you can still see the candlelight coming through as he runs when... up and like points and you're pretty athletic right i guess do you think you could surprise them by tumbling through that window i can kick it in meanwhile inside that room uh wait first aaron what are you doing <laughs> smithing could... away Safe in the corner. I'm I'm going through the window with the sword. Okay, so you're not even <laughs> yes. really thinking about it. You're just acting. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inside, Thanks. give me an athletics check, bud. Okay. First or acrobatics, whichever one I guess you want. Hey, I rolled four. Great. Okay, we'll get to that in a sec. Uh, big old arms grab around you. The other one comes in, says we can't kill him here. Uh, bring him, move him over here. Grab. Uh, do you resist? Do you fight? What do you? I I don't think I do at this stage. I think I'm mostly, uh, kind of curious how this is going to play out. Okay. Um, they start. He picks you up and carries you, uh, towards, uh, out out the door, and like there's a back door that he's leading to. One one of the other. Uh, uh, guardsmen, patrolmen, we'll call them, opens the door out to a like a very small, quiet, dark, uh, and there's like a well in the back, you know, sitting there, and they're slowly bringing you that direction. Um, then you know, one of the other ones is like, oh wait, well, let's go, like go grab the scroll, you you dummy, and like the guy goes back into the other room. You can kind of see back straight line almost to where to the edge of the table he grabs the uh, the scroll off the table um and turns and uh, starts to put it away uh just as the door to the uh closes uh separating your view then you hear a <laughs> as bertolas you come flying through uh the window and you have your sword, I'm assuming? Yeah, you went and grabbed the sword. Yeah, yeah, you said. Uh, Gonna go around. <laughs> wind goes... Uh, yeah, there's... I should wish there was a map, There's but, multiple exits and stuff, yes, so there I'm is. gonna go around to the back. Or there's obviously a, a front door. Yeah. Uh, well, they were heading in the opposite direction of the front door, right? Because I saw the door shut and stuff, so I'm heading in that relative direction. Yeah. So you you run around, yeah. That would have to be the front door that you go for. Uh, ra- razor, mm. Neil. Uh, I will uh, go in basically the front door. Cool. So you go with uh, Win. Mm. And Bodhi. Turn to the little Khajiit boy. Stay low and come with me. I'm going to sneak after Wynn and try and stay undetected. Roll sneak. 
Bertolas, you're inside, uh, just leaving the room, like about to close the door behind him. There's a guy, and he's got the scroll in his hand. It's one of the patrolmen, and he looks at you, uh, kind of shocked that you just burst through the window, uh, and he goes, "Oh shit!" Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> starts Perfect. reaching down and uh, drawing his own sword. What do you do? Okay. I am going to try to cut his hand off. <laughs> roll one roll, one, one the handed. Roll one handed. <laughs> For more reasons than one this time. Um I am going to spend a fate uh calling upon my training as a squire in the Knights of the Dragon and give myself a five. Which, what is that, a superb? It is. Well, I don't know if it's superb, but it's a five. Which is superb. Uh, he's going to try and fight you on that. He does not want his hand to be cut off. Uh, he succeeds in stopping you from cutting off his hand, but you are able to get through his defenses uh dealing some physical stress to him actually yeah it's still uh three physical stress so he's forced to take a minor consequence but i don't want to deal with that he's a mook so he falls to the ground uh elder scroll rolls bumps into the side of the wall as you kind of cut down across there is another uh he, you know you just you didn't just murder him. You sliced him and he fell to the ground with a non-mortal wound. Took himself out of the combat. Uh, but there are more guards standing in this hallway. Uh, and they clearly had just been going through some sort of commotion. They ready their weapons and look at you. Um, outside. Hello. <laughs> after hearing a crash, uh, Veil... Um, the guard who's holding on to you, um, and you're not 100% sure all of a sudden where he's he's got a dagger in his hand. He kind of looks back at you. He throws you up against the small stone well uh, and roll me an acrobatics check to resist. This is an attack. Well, um, <laughs> Um, I did not do well. Okay. By the well. Uh, uh, would a three be better? I'd think about using fate, potentially. Well, well. Uh, I'll say. Uh, how about this? He he throws you back. You don't take any damage because he didn't roll very well either. You kind of slam your back up against you know solid. Not at an awkward angle or anything, just a bit, bit lucky of how you kind of land and you breaks yourself enough. Your head bumps, but does no real damage. Uh, and he points his dagger at you and says, don't move. Um, do you really think that, like your captain, that it's a good idea, given the nature of my companions? Perhaps it's best that you give up now. Coming up to the front door, Win and Razor, you swing it open uh, mm -hmm. and staring the other direction back towards where all this commotion is with Bertolas. There is one like uh, guard standing in the doorway looking, uh, sorry, another door to the hallway uh, looking back that direction. And then as you turn, he turns and looks and he's like, ah, the escapees are attacking. They shout. No, we're just standing here. Uh, he, unfortunately, he left his sword sitting I mean... over, uh, like, on the middle of the table in the room. And mm. he turns and he starts going for it. Win? How many people are in this room, exactly? You see one. There's two more in the hallway. Okay, I'm gonna go to the hallway, then. Hey, gonna... You can handle this guy. I'm gonna step in front of the sword and have, like, my foot on it, if it's on the ground. Where is the sword in conjunction to? Like, I think it's on the table. It's on the table. Okay, well, I'm actually gonna, like... Am I close enough to it to pull it away from him? The table? 
or the table, the sword. Or, can I kick the table? You can grab, the yeah, table. you can grab the table and pull it, and it'll pull the sword <laughs> to you. Do it. Do yeah, it. That I'm would be hilarious. That. <laughs> Great. Uh, roll. Give me. A, that's an athletics check. Yeah. You need plus three on that. I think. I, I hope. Where is my thing? Oh, crap. Maybe a four. What did you spend your point on from last time? Um, I moved my athletics up to. To a four. To fair. To fair, actually, because I did not think that far ahead. Oh. Yeah. Let it. Oh, that's right. You switched over to acrobatics. Yes, I did. So I switched the two around because I was planning to be a rogue because somebody was going sword and board, and then they are not sword and board. So now I have to do the two-handed thing. <laughs> have to maybe a strong word. No. no, no. <laughs> you do you. Hold on. So Oh, fantastic. Nice. Uh, I think that. Was if that was, yeah, I think that was a crit success. Yeah. Uh, it was. Yeah, fate hey, two. Hey, yeah. Okay. That That's is a absolutely. critical success. <laughs> Can I capitalize on that by, like, instilling some fear in him and telling him we don't have to fight? You could just run away. Um, yeah, but, yes, yeah, something awesome's got to happen. Uh, okay. He, you, uh, you grab on, he's going for the sword on the table and he's almost there when you grab onto the edge of the thing and you give it a yank and it pulls over to you um in fact you pull it with such a yank that it kind of the edge of the table comes up and uh he just as he's reaching for it his sword kind of starts flying through the air right towards you like handle side first if you want uh if you will and the edge of the table comes up and cracks him right underneath on his jaw and he goes flying backwards lands on his back as the sword and then you catch it out of the air and then i don't know what you do with it you got another sword all right that's uh, amazing is he, is he knocked out? uh no he's slowly getting back up off the ground razor you see this and then make your way into the hallway there's two of them uh with their backs to you there you could see they're about mm -hmm. to square off against bertalas um yeah, no, we're not doing that. So, uh, thanks for being in a hallway for me. Uh, I'm gonna cast sparks. Sparks. Lightning just... dealing shock damage within your zone. Yeah. So I'm just gonna zap them down the hallway. Okay. Give me your uh, destruction roll. Yep. Superb. The, uh, it's a it's a single target, just like in the game. Right. Uh, but that's could do some damage. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, the guy gets slammed in the back with <laughs> magical energy. <laughs> Falls to the ground. <laughs> Mark off one Magicka point. Yep. Uh, and then uh, you're outside, uh, we've got sneaking around. What'd you get on your sneak check? Fair. That's okay. It's not bad. It's still, it's like, you know, positive. It's, it's fair. Uh, the kid gets a, uh, gets a two. So that's also, oh, that's good. It's good. Uh, where do you go? What are you doing? I mean, we're sneaking around the back. I assume there's been some noise from our good buddy Vale being attacked and the discussion. So I'm just going to go towards his voice. Yeah, so you're able to kind of get up. You have to kind of climb a little bit and get over the wall to get to the actual back part of this. Uh, building its little backyard and you see Vale back pressed against a, a, a well and like there's no um, bucket or anything that there's just a open hole in the ground you're uncertain 
it's even used as a well. Does Maybe it uh, look else. like? Is this the guard captain or a random guard? This is a random. This is random guard. Random tough guard number one. <laughs> it's a good title. Uh, can I tell if Vale's got it handled or not from here? Um. Hey, Vale. Well, I'm still talking. Uh, uh, he tells you to shut up or he's going to cut your tongue out. And also oh, don't touch good. it. Uh, can I cast a this... spell? He's going to cut your tongue out. Hmm. Next person who comes closer gets a lead seven. All right. Well, I will basically say, like, well, I warned you. And then I will stand up and stare at him, uh, feeling defiant. He... All right. I'm going to take this as my cue that it's not going well and interfere. <laughs> uh, I'm going to run at him and try and kick him in the head. That's going to be a brawl. Can I argue for your acrobatics since I'm jumping places and he's very tall? Roll acrobatics and then I'll give you a boost if you do good. That sounds good to me. Also, can I tag like I'm distracting him? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't remember what you tagging his aspect does. Should be plus two, right? Yep. Oh, what happened? I forgot. That'll make this roll a great one, then. Uh, Bertalas, uh, standing in the room uh, with you, who hasn't really done anything yet, he's just looking at you <laughs> smiling, is the guard, is the captain. Right. <laughs> it's just like, Hey, man. <laughs> What's going on? What are you doing here? Nice sword. Hey, thanks. Uh, okay. Hold on, I'm a little busy. All right, what would you get on your roll again? Sorry, I was distracted. Uh, I got a plus two, and with uh, Vale's help, that brings it up to a four total. All right. Uh, you know what? We're just going to say that Vale is the boost, and that can be your... Uh... Veil is an. I'm not going to make you reroll brawl. Under normal circumstances, if you're fighting somebody, you're trying to hit him with your. It'll be brawl, but we'll just let it go. Uh, with a four, and he doesn't notice. Uh, he you you kick him in the side of the head, and he goes down to a knee. Uh, his he, like coughs. With the kind of like, he's just like, <laughs> and like looks back at you um, as his, you can see his eyes are kind of, uh, as he ha takes the dazed uh, consequence. He's kind of like opening his eye. Uh, there's a little Khajiit boy who's watching from a distance. Uh, vale, you should take the child. You don't want to see this. I believe that. I go get the child and uh, head back towards where the Elder Scroll might be, I guess. Or, I don't know, what are the doors? Is there like a back door out of here? I would take that too. There's the one door that leads back into the building where you just came, where you're pretty sure there are patrolmen, but also uh, apparently somebody's fighting or something inside there. And you also heard yeah. a, 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 the distinct sound of shocking electricity. And breaking glass and stuff like that. That's the direction I'm headed. I'll bring the kid. <laughs> so you motion for him. Uh, he, he, he. Yeah, okay. He'll come with you. We'll just make it simple. <laughs> he pops down. He's like at first, like, no, what? We're hiding. What are you doing? And then, uh, and then, you motion, and he pops down and slinks behind. Uh, and you open the door, and you can see again inside Bertolas. Your turn. As these two guards uh, prep their themselves and bring their weapons to bear. So there's two of them. There's two of them. Oh, there's one of them. Okay, so one of them was taken out by um, lightning, uh, lightning from uh, Razor there. Yes, one of them. Okay, okay, well, that changes what I will need to do. Um, I'll just motion to both the guards on the ground and be like. You want to end up like them? Ooh, 
roll the uh, speech. Um, yeah, that's gonna be speech. I got a little bit of speech. I like it. We're getting some diversity of roles here. This is this feels this is nice. Uh, and I will uh, tap cool under fire. Uh, spend a fate to give myself a plus two, so that'll be a three. Okay. Using my cool head, not not acting on impulse, and you know slaughtering a bunch of guards. Um. Well, just as you say that, the door down at the other end of the hallway opens. Uh, and Vale is standing there, unhurt, it appears, uh, and looks back, you know, sees the guard captain like, hey man, hey, I'm calm. That's apparently what my calm idea of calm is. <laughs> um, and uh, he looks around, you do enough mental stress for him to if he would have to start taking consequences and instead he's gonna he puts out puts out his hand drops his weapon to the ground he's like all right just don't hurt my family i roll my eyes (laughs) why would we hurt your family uh i pick up the scroll that's laying down on the ground uh and i approach the guy who surrendered and tap him on the head with it we weren't going to attack you, idiot. But you're criminals. Uh, I believe that your we captain... Were that we, were, we were people that were willing to help you. And the only thing you've uh, shown us is that you're probably worse thieves than we've ever run into. I believe that the... A lure of power and greed is perhaps a bit much for Captain Gareth. As I walk towards him. Hey. I've got no hostile feelings towards you, young lad. <laughs> of course not. The power of Mara be with you. Yeah. He's just dead. Thanks for the rest of this scene. There's a little more commotion as... A couple other the patrolmen guards show up, but realize what's going on, and it's like you guys won the fight, and so they. I mean, they're gonna do, if you if you guys don't attack, then they don't have to defend. It takes a little while for them to maybe. Not running, you know, be defending themselves, but. Combat ends. Oh, win inside the room. We gotta wrap that up. The guy gets up off the ground, uh, puts up his fist at you as you're holding his sword, and he kind of he backs up a little bit, uh, still looking like he's gonna fight. Or I look run. at the swords in my hand, and I look up at him, and I do a double take. It's like really. Okay, so he runs off, <laughs> <Yeah>. and then <laughs> sees everybody else is surrendering, and so joins in. Um, brother Urun uh, and the the older woman who's here been here in town uh, and uh, whatever the Smith's name orc guy was mm. uh, wow. all kind of gather Rude. What? what happened what did I do no murdering happened. You just forgot the, the, If we the, never the, finish the scene, no one gets to know if I killed him or not. Outside. <laughs> uh, you've got uh, yeah, this guy. He's got a he's got a dagger. Uh, uh, so do I. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm just gonna. You can stop me, no, but I'm just gonna narrate right. through this. Uh. I tell them to leave, I pull my dagger out, and I saunter up to him like I'm going to kill him, 100% ready to slit his throat. And then I hear Vale say something over yonder, probably to the kid, and I turn and I look at them, and I look at the guard, and I look back at Vale, and then I put my dagger away, and I just punch his lights out. <laughs> That's gonna be Brawl. 
Uh, I don't have any skills in that, so hopefully okay. he goes down in one hit or this loses a lot of its cinematic value. We'll see. Mediocre. Not good, not bad. Mediocre. Uh, you make contact with him, you deck him in the side. Uh, he's already been dazed, so you can daze, uh, tag that for free. He's got that boost on him. Hey, so you get probably two a good idea. Uh, and he rolled really bad as well. Um, so you clock him, and he looks like he's going to... You know what? Actually, he does. He does. He falls over, gets up with the dagger in hand, and lunges at you one last time. I mean, if he hits me, uh, sorry, Chad, but I will kill him. <laughs> You're not sorry. Not even a little bit. Roll uh, acrobatics. Or, yeah, that's your, probably your best defense. Good. Hey. Uh, he whiffs by, but he maybe cuts along the inside of your uh, shitty clothing. Uh and it's your turn. Exposes my beautiful abs. What will ever... No one will be able to stop themselves now. <laughs> Put a lot of work into those abs. Gotta show I want to appreciate your midriff. Thank you. I'm gonna... Can I tap dazed again? I don't know how combat and fates works. Uh, you can spend a fate point on it. If you want. It's not worth a fate point. Get one free... Well, I rolled a one, which is honestly not bad considering I have no skill in this. Um, I I rolled a minus three, and he only has a plus two. Uh, so that's enough to deck him again. Uh, and he falls to the ground. He drops the dagger, and he kind of looks. He's bleeding out of his nose now. Um, kind of looks at you with disgust and uh falls over to the side and like kind of crawls away uh to try and recover i'm gonna kick the dagger away from him and steal it it's mine now two My daggers dagger. right down dagger okay am i forgetting anybody I else and i i i'm really <laughs> I think we got it this time. Yeah, you forgot how I was in that room with the pot of gold. <laughs> Kick him too. Pot of gold. Okay. Have a like a one-handed sword or a two-handed sword, like two two-handed swords or one two-handed sword, one one-handed sword. What's going on with that? It's uh, you have two, you have one two-handed sword and one one-handed sword. Handed sword. Got it. Okay. Uh. The village leaders kind of gather up to decide what to do, and it's pretty quick that they they basically vote Captain Gareth out of his position, and he is not happy about that as the calm effects wear off of him, uh, and they're they're like, well, okay, well, we're going to strip you of all your stuff, and then you have to leave. And the other patrolmen, guardsmen, back about they all feel maybe a little bit, some of them are guilty or like, sorry, boss, like, time for you to go. Uh, I did want to look down that well at some point. I'm vaguely curious if there aren't some bodies down there. Um, there, you take a, a lamp or, or, or something. Hey, Razor, come over here. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Light. Uh, magical light illuminates the area down the uh, well. Uh, at first, you may be looking down there and you don't really see anything, but as the light, as your eyes adjust... You can see what looks like one. There's a little bit of water down there in the bottom, not a lot, and it looks like there's maybe a, a leg, but well, just one leg, 
waterlogged, pants mm-hmm. covered, a boot sticking up, kind of bent at an awkward angle, down in the well. Mm. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm sure they advocate. read him his Miranda rights as they were throwing him down a hole. I am going to advocate for execution then. This man defies the order of nature by killing the own his own clan. That can't be allowed. Or we can give him a chance to rectify his mistakes and he can help us with a uh, ice demon. This isn't my town. Uh, so it's out of my hands on what they decide to do with him. However, I wouldn't fight beside this man for any reason. Nope. There is a, a thing my my tribe used to do to people or criminals or those who did uh, no. ill. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't want to hear the end. I don't want to hear the end of it. <laughs> you send them out to you send them out, and I still continue. You send them out in front of a wildebeest or whatever thing that you needed to yeah needed to be a distraction. Let that person be a distraction for however long their life is, and then just continue on as you do. I think that's more <laughs> cruel than just executing them. Yeah, you have to, you have to make use of everybody. Uh-huh. Everybody has a use. And what if he survives? Trial by combat by the gods. He's absolved himself. Right, something like that. Regardless, <laughs> it's up to the village elders to decide whatever they want to do with him. Regardless, we've dallied here long enough. Uh, well, I mean, it's pretty dark out. We should probably sleep here for the night. Oh, yes. Yes, we'll sleep here. I mean, there's a building. There's, there's a fire inside. It's going to be warm. <sighs> yes, well, like I said. We'll sleep here for tonight, and then we'll head out in the morning. Wait, is he really the leader? I mean, do you contest his leadership? I'm just asking. <laughs> then I, I think... do not believe that we, there is a leader of us. We are all in this together. Right. Razor does seem very wise, though. Or knowledgeable, at least. There's a, yeah. It's, oh, okay. It's a distinction. Mm. that one yep. can make. So, so they, I guess we'll wait and figure out what they're going to do. Did you, Have you ever seen them do that wildebeest thing, Win? That seems crazy. A couple of times. No wonder you left. <laughs> I didn't... <laughs> Not intentionally. Because if your culture is so into making use of everything, what do they do for fun, I guess? Well, everybody likes to practice with their swordsmanship or their daggers, or you could train with the wise woman. There's certain tasks that everybody must uphold. I don't understand what's not fun about that? I mean, aren't there things that I mean, aren't as practical, but yet heal your soul? It seems like uh, a harsh life. Only to those who haven't been born into it, perhaps. But harshness does not equate, like, it should not equate any negativity to it either. You grow and you learn just like anybody else. You learn how to survive and take care of yourself and others. And a great sense of community comes from it. I, I believe that is true. For they working together at a common task is certainly something that brings people together. Um, even if that common task is war. Mm. We do not war, not lightly. Hmm. Numbers but you're, are important. I, when the, all of the tasks that need to be done are done and the day is just about over, do you find the sunsets beautiful? We find it. We take 
we take beauty in wherever we can. The desert doesn't need a sunset or a sunrise to be beautiful. It doesn't need a singular part of the day to make it even more pristine than any next hour. To assume that there needs to be a certain set time or event to occur to make something so beautiful is something very shallow. That was not my intent, it, but was to give an example and wonder if you looked upon it with wonder. Every single day from the desert is a day of wonder. What we do... I'm glad. Depends. From one day to the other. Well, uh, let's see what happens to our general friend. He was... I fear that he may have been touched by some darkness, for there seemed to be an extra greed in his eye. And I... Uh, perhaps uh, the justice of the village will be suiting fit we fit we in one shall see they um at first they're gonna hold him for the night but he gets more and more um ornery as the night goes on and eventually um they basically just boot him out in the middle of the night Um, yeah. Do they give him rations or anything? Um, I think they originally had planned on it. Um, but th when they ask him who, like, who's down there, and he refuses to answer, there's, like, this sort of dawning on everybody in the village, at least, of, like, oh shit he killed someone who is actually important here without and so then they don't give him any food and they just boot him do we find out who was in the well yeah it turns out it was a uh, uh, one of the women uh, a wife of one of the other patrolmen who had for a while been like she wasn't taking orders necessarily and she was kind of leading the uh, civilian faction i guess inside mm -hmm. um and they had fights a couple of spats with one another and then uh she went out supposedly went out um to uh gather some supplies with the patrol and they there was the you know, the captain she went off to i don't know she, she like fell down the, the story was that she like fell down a cliff or something i don't i i just made that up on the spot you guys I, it doesn't make any sense right how that she would but fell off a cliff and yeah the, uh, he lied. yes the cliffs that are so abundant around the coral region um but the night, the rest of the night passes. Um, actually, at some point, before it gets to be too late, um, Kikira, the Khajiit, comes to you, Bertolas. And um, she's got, uh, like, warm, warmed up rags and, like, uh, some water with some some sort of tincture stuff in it. She's like, oh, we can t I can take a look at your wounds. Oh, yes, thank you. That's very kind of you. Kikira, you have a tincture? Do you know much of alchemy? I have a mortar and pestle. I, I'm a really just a novice alchemist. Hmm. But I been able to collect some of these uh, ingredients that have healing properties over time it's been very useful over the last well, if you, year if you don't mind some uh <clears throat> instruction i wouldn't mind taking a look at your stores and telling you what you can do with what sure um, you wouldn't happen to have any beautiful purple flowers would you 
what kind of purple? What do you? Yes, I have some purple flowers. I believe they are most often called nightshade. Nightshade. Do I have any? What do you need nightshade for? Nightshade. I'm not looking anything up, but this is just, you know, just. Just yep. thinking out loud about whether or not I want to give you some nightshade. Um, she says no. I do not have any nightshade. It's um. I mean, I'm not trying to kill anybody, am I? Well, nightshade has other purposes, but. I may but have mostly that. <laughs> There's a man who has recently been exiled that threatened to kill me. I would like to make sure that he can't. Ah. I'm sure you understand. With just a little help from the good night flower. Um... She does not have, she does not have nightshade to give you. She would if she did. Um, Jesus. She also um, thanks you. So go ahead, Aaron, and re remove your uh, stress. Moderate consequence. Was it a moderate? I think it was a yes, minor. Sir. No, it was moderate. I have, I also have a Correct. minor, but ah. Uh, well, your miner should have gone away if I healed you. Oh, this yeah. is the the chilled one. Oh yeah, no, that uh, not fixing that. And that's technically not a consequence. Oh, the as oh, I guess that's an aspect then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a. Yep. Um. She thinks. Oh, she wants to talk. She said, "Thank you." Uh, what elf? What's your name? Neo? <laughs> Neo Lilfaneth. Neo Lilfaneth. Mer. I haven't Bosmer. given my name out, so nope. if she just calls me Bosmer, that's fine. Bosmer. What's your name? Neo Lilfaneth. Uh, thank you, Neo Lilfaneth. I. My son. Uh, said you helped keep him safe. He is a talented child. I hope you teach him well the ways of the shadows. Ways of the shadows? What? Well, he's obviously very sneaky. He Have you not noticed? Up again? There's no shame in such things. Sometimes nocturnal blesses those she deems worthy. He obviously has talent for it. That... <sighs> He's got a talent for a lot of things. I don't want... Thank you for keeping him alive. I, do... I, I just worry about... the future for him. He will learn. All children do. Or they don't. But I think that's up to you. It's hard to raise... We've been here for a little while, but... And she's looking around at the... the other, you know, kind of the... Well, it's out into the darkness at the village. Um, and... Uh, I think we should stay for a little bit longer, but we were going to maybe try to go to the Imperial City again. Is that... I think he would do well there, but I don't know if you want to travel with the likes of us, uh, showing the criminal mark again. Yeah. Maybe more dangerous than you would like. Though we would offer some semblance of protection, as you have seen. At least three people in this party know how to fight, and I am so handy I, in the woods. I have an old friend 
in the city who um, I think can help you with your um, scar branding problem. Um, it's an old Imperial Guardsman, a friend of mine. Um, I hope he's still there. He, he might not be. I can give you his address and maybe he can help you. Certainly wouldn't be opposed. His name is Eborg. <laughs> it's a great generator you have there. <laughs> it's my brain. <laughs> Eborg. <laughs> Better write that down somewhere. Eborg, <laughs> the fo former Imperial Guard. Hmm. <sighs> uh, if you want to, I'm sure maybe it's too far out of the way, or maybe he's not even there anymore. Such is the nature of things. We really gotta hide our hands in the future. Oh, if only there were gloves. <laughs> yeah, we need gloves. I had gloves with my mage. Oh, some cool outfit, fingerless gloves. Which is gone. Um, in the morning little uh, young Khajiit uh, whose name is Piperin uh, shows up. He's, he's there. It's like right when you guys wake up. He's like hanging outside the little shack of the uh, priest. Um, and he's got a wooden uh, like a piece of wood that it's uh, and like a whittling knife and he's putting the fiddle finishing touches on this we probably could spend more time on it and get more done but uh it's uh the face of a wood elf coming out of like a kind of a gnarled uh it looks ah. he's done it so it looks like a trunk and the the face is coming out and it's really good like it is spot on clearly he did modeled it after you and uh he uh who he, wouldn't though he like uh he's very he's kind of nervous and then he he holds it out for you i'll take it uh damn stoic uh give him a pat on the head as i take his little carving Thank you for your help last night. We would not have gotten to him in time if you had not told us. And he runs off. His little feet go pitter-patter, pitter-patter across the village square. Um, yeah, what's your plan, guys? God, that's secretly adorable. <clears throat> I do whisper to Neil Ephelineth, um, Mara does work in strange ways, doesn't she? And I, uh, as my eyes get on the small figurine, <laughs> and then uh, continue on. Regardless, I'm going to go talk to the preacher again. Okay. Yeah, it seems like, uh, are you going to try take a shot at the Antronach or not? That's probably the big decision here. Uh, that's entirely up to them. Um, like, are we are we done dancing around the subject of whether or not you want our help or not? He says no. It's been enough. Um, for us to handle right now, I think we were up late last night discussing. Listen. Your friend was white, right. When she's right. It's not sustained. We can't stay here. We're, mm -hmm. we're just going to run out of food. And unless 
well, you see the the patrolmen. They're just basically bandits. Mm-hmm. They're going out and stealing we, other people's stuff so that we, we can... gather that. And we can't keep doing that. But that means we don't have any way to stay here. We've got enough supplies to last us for a while, but we're probably going to move on. Mm. This church will stay here with the horrors inside of it, a reminder of the gods' protection. Mm. I mean, just Mines. leave aside. Yeah, we'll make sure to... Don't go inside! Frost Astronaut inside. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Very well, then. That's what you decide. And like I said before, when we get to the Imperial City, we will tell somebody about this place. You might be long gone, but hopefully with the time, then maybe they'll, maybe the Empire will get its shit together and finally send some people back here to clean this place up. If they have enough men. Mm-hmm. I'm worried that our people were roped up to some big battle and yeah and they lost at the very least i can take your this this atronach uh, information i can take it to the mages guild they they might be interested in sending somebody for their own benefit so um thank you and we can uh one thing that they do have is clothing warm blankets he's got he offers you the spare bedrolls that you guys used hmm. that night uh and if you had the chilled effect that goes away you guys slept inside it was warm mm -hmm. um and they also gloves? give you ooh gloves yes you can get gloves yes yeah we'll take the gloves because that causes more problems i cut well, the fingers off mine yeah <laughs> <laughs> You I need to, but string, gotta be able to, yeah, exactly. I try not to make a show of it. Wait, uh, do you have to have a bow to feel the string? Is that right? Eventually, I will have a bow. Okay. Thanks, Vale. <laughs> Finding me of my inadequacies. Oh, sorry, that was... Uh... <clears throat> you need a bow? <laughs> Did I hear, overhear you? Yes. Yes, my, uh, my friend here could has been in need of a bow for some time. I say, trying to make up. Uh, well, I think uh, Richard, uh, he, I think, has a spare. I think he has two. So long as it is a spare and not whatever you will use to hunt, you have far more people to feed than I do. Mm. There hasn't been very good hunting in these woods for the last number of months. Uh, but uh, yeah, on, on a talking to Rashad, I, he's like, well, actually, it's you know the spare one. The reason why I have two is because one's gonna break soon. You can already see the split in the, and he points it out. And he's like, I'm not very good at making bows. Uh, my dad did that, and I just, you know, my mom was going down the other path with my mother or my apprenticeship. So, but I did learn to shoot. You can have this it one. Is, it is an invaluable skill, and I will gladly take a tool. Yeah, take damaged bow. and uh, <laughs> Damaged bow. And crude arrows. we got to start low. we got to start with the sh low-grade equipment. Mm -hmm. Like my sword. Perspective. Before we get to the, you know, the Daedric shit. And then you need to hurry fight. up and find here scene so I can have a cursed bow, but a really nice cursed bow. <laughs> and then, and then when you fight uh, no. bandits at high levels, they for some reason will have all the best equipment, just like you guys do. Right. Why does that bandit have a glass sword? <laughs> so no on the Atronach, then you guys. They mm -hmm. give you some supplies. They give you clothing. But, yep. it, but again, they don't give you actually that much stuff. 
overall. Uh, I mean, you guys have some the clothing food. is more than enough, and staying warm we, is going to be. Helpful. That's going to be a massive Casey? and dry. Yeah. What's would smithing be the skill to fix a bow? Technically, yeah. Well, I don't no think other, there's another like. Don't you need another like a skill. carpenter? There's no other. Uh... Is this woodworking? Oh, well, I mean... I mean, if we're going off Skyrim skill trees, then smithing is correct. Yeah, if we're smithing. going up IRL shenanigans, that's called a well, bower. Yeah. <laughs> right. In real life, but... yeah, not not at all the same thing, but. Uh... Uh, this is Elder Scrolls rule, game, so yeah. if it's a weapon, Fair. you smith it. Hey, Bertolos, uh, I mean, can, can I... you hit this with your hammer until it's not yeah. damaged anymore? Can I look it at thinks. it and just see if it, it's fixable with the tools around here, or uh, or how long that might take? Give me a roll. Okay, well, I got a one. I mean, you Average. think you can, like, you know, maybe wrap it up keep it together a little bit you could think maybe we could put a little resin on it uh and if if uh neo lilfinith lets you you can put some a little bit of like a gross i don't know resiny stuff to try and glue it together yeah um you know lilfinith if you are able to find me some resin out in the woods and maybe some um sinew i might be able to reinforce it but we'd okay, have to have those mind. supplies first. I appreciate that. Of course. Before we do leave, uh, I do want to like give a like uplifting speech of hope, and that this, there is this is a uh, that this is a change, uh, this new direction, but it is one for the better, and that the you know all that stuff uh, that goes on with them, um, primarily because I've got a stunt about talking to large people, and I've not used it yet. <laughs> Large groups of people, not large people. I'm actually bad at talking to large people, if that's relevant. <laughs> Being dragged off the well again, I gave the hint. Uh, no, but I want to give them kind of an inspirational speech in hopes that um, somewhere in there they get a little more hope out of this whole thing. Yeah, uh, they are appreciative. Um you know, they might in the future look back at this moment and be like, what did they, you know, those people came in, messed up our, you know, got into our business, and then we gave them a bunch of stuff. But, this be, you know, there's this sense of doing the right thing as well. Um, and that hits home when you are trying to be hopeful and, and spread the message. So that's probably actually what they're going to remember. Instead of the fight, they'll remember the positive things about these days. I hope so. I'm going to push the, my result up to a seven by tagging. Um, I was born to help, and here I am. <laughs> nice. Um. Yeah, you guys set out then after that speech. Um, it is another full day's travel. Uh, you guys do one night of camping, and then on that next day, you kind of come over a tall... You, there's a long rise, a tall hill, uh, and just so happens you know on the other side it kind of goes down much more rapidly and the, you can see over top the trees that are in front of you and way off on the distance and maybe win is the first one to notice because i like it from your perspective um there's almost like well for you you notice that there's a big lake out in front of you it's and it's still a ways out but way off like on the horizon um is almost like there's a, a there's glowing star or something shining on the horizon uh, catches your eye um, and those in the know would know that that's white gold tower at the center of the imperial city shining light um, a beacon of hope you might say but around it the city the small towns that line the uh, lake are slowly slowly 
rotting is it's kind of been a little bit of a theme happening but what? Yeah. no finally we're we're getting close uh yeah, I think that's where we're going to wrap it up. I feel like we got uh, your last little their perspective there, Greg. But uh, I think we I like the internal monologue uh, to wrap it up. So so let go ahead. What what do you think as you see this shining light on the on the horizon? Having not been to the Imperial City before, I see this light upon the horizon as a, a beacon of hope and a beacon of the destiny that awaits myself and my companions uh, in the city. Uh, as I look down and see that the edges of it are filled of some rot and some anger, I, 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 with, I know that the world has been withering and it is now time for something to come that can stop that and stop that rot um, and i confident that we bring that to the imperial city and with that new hope will not just be brought to one village uh, but to the whole empire and the whole world uh, as things are changing now from for the better from the world of oblivion well uh i think with that we'll uh, end our episode three session here. Uh, good job, everybody. Again, I keep thinking that I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do damage to them and really make them make this a deadly system. And then I don't think I actually even hurt you guys, but that's okay. Thank you all for those watching. I, I wish I was more active on chat, but I got it. I think chat was doing okay without you. Yeah, <laughs> doing really good. <laughs> Diedrich Lords, man. I just love the section where they were talking about how to pronounce your name. It was great. I laughed so hard. It's, but it's Neola Flaneth. It's so easy. Come on, guys. What's hard about saying Neola Flaneth? I mean, if you're Daedric Prince, it's hard, apparently. Well, I like the Flaneth. They have, Whoever they have, that, one, that was great. <laughs> they struggle with basic functions, you know. Just wait till you find out my surname. Uh, pass. <laughs> uh, Y'all have a good night. That's a good cliffhanger. Bye, everyone. Okay. Bye, Bye, guys.